Hi everyone, and welcome to House of Vining. I'm Ivy, and I've got a real fun and easy project for you. We are making a creepy bunny decorative pillow. First off, let's have a little origin story about how this project came to be. Upon moving in with me, my partner was appalled when he noticed a pillow on my couch that was a large replica of a certain yellow bunny-shaped marshmallow Easter candy, which will remain unnamed throughout this video. He had an aversion to the pillow only because he hated the candy so much as a child, but quickly changed his tune when he realized that its unique, almost ergonomic shape actually made it the best pillow in the house. He and the bunny soon became besties and he couldn't be on the couch without it. Eventually, all that love took its toll and when the pillow started becoming too weathered, I decided to make a replacement. I wanted the new pillow to reflect our spooky aesthetics, plus the original had become covered in veganaise and dog vomit. <coughs> so I knew I wanted the new pillow to consist of a pillow insert with a removable washable cover. Thus, the Creepy Bunny pillow was born and I'm here today to share it with you all. If you'd like to make your own Creepy Bunny, I have the pattern for sale in my House of Vining pattern boutique, which I'll give a link to below. Now that you know Creepy Bunny's backstory, let's get started. All of my pieces are cut out from fabric and my notions are gathered. I used a cotton velour as the self fabric for this project, which will make up the outer pillowcase. And then I just used basic muslin to cut the contrast, which will make up the inner pillow form. The velour fabric I'm using for the pillowcase is technically a knit and has some stretch to it. So to stabilize the fabric and make it easier to sew, I block fused some lightweight trico interfacing to the wrong side of the velour before cutting out all of my self pieces. This is only optional and not necessary if the fabric you're using is more stable. After cutting, you'll want to fuse zipper A and zipper B interfacing pieces to the wrong side of their corresponding fabric pieces to help strengthen the zipper opening. Zipper A gets fused to the bottom of one of the bunny pieces, and zipper B gets fused along one side of the center of the body piece. We're going to be starting our creepy bunny pillow by decorating the face. I have my two bunny pieces laid out here, and the one that we already applied the strip of interfacing to will be the back, so we're actually going to set that one aside. The remaining bunny piece that doesn't have interfacing is what we'll be using as the front of the bunny. You'll want to start by sort of mapping out where you want your facial features to be. This pattern comes with a template with a bunch of fun, funky facial features, and you're welcome to use those or you can be creative and come up with your own face. I've gone ahead and already mapped out the placement of the facial features that I'd like to use, and I've just drawn them in with some white fabric chalk. The first part of the face I'm going to be working on will actually be the mouth, and he has a little sewn shut stitch mouth. In the pattern, I've included a template for this mouth in case you're interested in making one with similar proportions, but again, feel free to play around with this and come up with whatever facial features you like. I'll be creating the mouth by sewing sort of a decorative stitch with some embroidery floss. So I've got my white floss here and a nice large hand sewing needle with an eye that's hopefully big enough for me to get this through. So we'll just go ahead and thread the needle. At the back end, I'm just going to tie a knot in the thread, and I want to start sewing my mouth by coming up from the back side so that my knot ends up hidden. First, we'll be sewing a stitch that will run across the main horizontal line of the mouth, and then we'll go back and get all the little vertical stitches. So let's turn it like this. I'm going to come from underneath and bring my needle up right through this first point at the beginning of the horizontal line for the mouth. Just pull it up. And now I'll sew forward to this next point where the second stitch begins. So here's where we go down. Okay, there's our first stitch. Now I'll go underneath again and come upwards at the next stitch point. And we'll go down by moving backwards to this point. So we want to go down exactly where we see this first stitch end. And now I'll just continue this stitch all the way until I reach the other side of the mouth.
Once you get comfortable with the stitch, you can even speed it up a little bit by doing this move. I'll go down, but then bring my needle all the way to the point at which I'm gonna have it come up again. And that gave us one complete stitch. So I'm just gonna continue that as I finish it out. Now I'll go down to complete my last stitch for this portion. And now we'll be moving on to make the little horizontal stitch lines. And this is why it's definitely good to thread your needle with a nice long piece of embroidery floss because I don't have to tie this off. I can just keep going with the same piece of thread. So coming up from underneath, I'm gonna come to the end of one of my first stitch lines. I'll come up and we're gonna be bringing the needle down right at this point, but as I pass over the horizontal line that we already have, I find it helps kind of stabilize this stitch a little more if you try to bring your needle through a little bit of the embroidery floss as it passes that horizontal line. So I'll go like this and just kind of skim through this stitch as I then complete it by actually going down into the fabric here. And now we'll continue. So I'll go up at this point, try to catch a little bit of this thread. And as I come down, I can also jump to bring it up at the next spot. Okay, I'm about to take my last stitch, so I'm just gonna go down and flip everything over to the other side. And at the back, we just wanna tie this off with a nice secure knot. So I'm actually just gonna go over to the knot where I began and sort of run my needle through that knot and use that as a tie off point by then bringing my needle through the loop of thread once and twice to make a knot. Then we cut and let's see, yeah. Now that my mouth is done, I'm gonna be adding the eyes. I cut a couple things out of felt. I'm gonna be doing one eye as just this sort of cool X-shaped eye. And you'll see in the pattern template that I included sort of a smaller X and a larger X. I'm gonna stack the smaller X on top of the large one to be one eye. And for the other eye, this is actually just a pre-made eyeball patch that I purchased off of Amazon. But you'll see if you look at the little facial feature template that I made a template of this same eye shape if you'd like to make something similar out of felt as well. And finally, I also have this little droplet of blood that I cut out of felt, but you know, it could be a teardrop, whatever you like, but of course I'm gonna go with blood. All of these little facial features are gonna be sewn on the machine using an edge stitch placement, which means we'll just be sewing about a 16th of an inch away from the cut edge of the felt around the perimeter of each of these little appliques. Now you could either pin these in place, but a really handy tool that I like to use for something like this is something called Wonder Tape. Wonder Tape, my roll is obviously getting a little bit small at this point because I've used it quite a bit, is a double-sided sticky tape that's also water soluble. So you could use it to kind of stick things in place before you sew it, and then after your project's completed, when you wash it, the tape will just sort of melt and disappear away. I'm gonna start by using the Wonder Tape to just attach the upper X onto the lower one. I just wanna cut a couple little pieces, and I'll stick them right onto the X. And once you have them stuck in place on one side, then you just pull off the layer of backing and we can then take this smaller X and stick it onto the larger one. All right, now that the backing is removed, I'm just gonna center it on top of the larger X and stick it down. And now I'll use Wonder Tape again on the back of the entire X to stick it onto the bunny where I already have its placement marked with chalk. I'm Gonna put some on the back of the eyeball as well while we're at it. Now we'll take the X, put it right here, eyeball, 
And the last little feature I need to stick in place is my little blood droplet. But luckily, the red felt that I used for the blood is actually a sticky backed felt already. So no wonder tape needed. I just get to come in and pull the backing off. And we'll just put this right there. Okay, so now to sew, we're gonna be going over to the machine and we'll just be doing an edge stitch around the edge of all of the little appliques. And I'm a little extra, so you'll probably notice that I will be changing my thread color to coordinate with the color of whatever I'm sewing. You don't have to do that though, it's totally up to you. Just wanted to point that out. right? Okay, now that the face is complete, we can go ahead and start assembling the outer pillowcase. I've gone ahead and laid out all the pieces that make up what I kind of just call the border of the pillow. It's just going to be the raised edge that runs around the side of the pillow, attaching the front to the back. So you should have one body, two ears, and two heads. I have everything laid out with the right side of the fabric facing up, and we're gonna arrange them in a very specific layout and piece them all together into a long strip. As I lay it all out on here, we're probably not gonna be able to fit everything into the camera's view, so uh, let's go ahead and toss up a little diagram. There we go. I'm gonna take one head and put it right here. And as you're trying to figure out which direction this piece goes, just note that there's a single notch on one side and a double on the other. You want the single notch to match the other single notch that's on the body, and that leaves the double notch to match up to the double notch on the ear piece. So this goes here, and this goes here. And now I'll place the ears on either end to attach to the head pieces, which of course will not fit on the camera. Next, I'm just gonna go ahead and pin all four of these short little seams with the right side of the fabrics touching. After you have all of your seams pinned, then you're just gonna go to the sewing machine and sew all of them with quarter inch seam allowance, being sure that you backstitch both ends of the seam. Then take them to the iron and simply press the seam allowances open on all of them. Next, we'll be attaching our border to the back of the bunny. So not the bunny piece that we attached all the facial features to, but the back is the one that should still be blank, except for the fact that we've also fused this little piece of interfacing to the bottom where our zipper is going to go. I'm gonna start by walking you through this process in terms of showing you what will match up to what, but ultimately all the nitty gritty details are gonna be handled at the sewing machine. So here's my assembled border. And just discussing what's going to match up with what, I have a notch at the center of the body section of the border. That's going to match up to this notch at the center of the bottom of the bunny. So this will go here. The seams along the border, these two little short seams here, will match up to these two inward facing points where the tailor tacks are. Also, we have some tailor tacks midway along the ear portions that will match up to the tailor tacks at the tip of the ears, way up at the top of the bunny. And finally, these last two little tailor tacks will both come and meet at this tailor tack in the center. Plus, there's even a few additional notches along the way that you're gonna use as matchup points that will really kind of help you distribute the fabric along these curved seams. Additionally, I wanna identify the portion where the zipper is going to go. At the bottom of the bunny, there should be two notches that are closest to the center notch. So these two notches right here, where we also have coordinating notches along the border, our zipper is going to sit between those two notches. So when we're at the sewing machine and I'm calling out the zipper placement area, you'll know that this area is what I mean. We're gonna be changing our stitch and doing a little bit of a different technique for that zipper area when we come to it. But just to get us started and allow you to sort of wrap your head around the placement of everything, let's just talk about how we're going to position our pieces to begin. I'll take my bunny, and right now the bunny has the right side of the fabric facing up. I wanna grab 
my border and have it placed right side down against the bunny. And I also wanna be sure that if I were to sew this side of it around the perimeter of the bunny, that the side that has my interfacing will get sewn onto the interfaced portion at the bottom of the bunny as well. I have these two little points at the top of the earpiece. We'll begin our sewing at this tailor tack at the corner, and we want to have that tailor tack matched up exactly to the tailor tack between the two ears. So that's going to be just like this. And again, be sure that you have the right sides of your fabric together. I'm going to start by pinning just this one point in place by taking my pin and sticking it directly into the tailor tack we can see on top, as well as directly into the tailor tack of the bunny. And then I'll just weave my pin back up through. And you wanna be sure that you have this angled so that this first portion of the edge of the fabric will start to match up to the edge of the bunny's ear once you get past the little point in the cut edge of the fabric. Now this may seem a little bit crazy, especially if you've seen my other videos and know how much I love pinning and pinning technique. We are not gonna be pinning this whole thing in place. There's so many odd little pivots and tricks that we have to do at the machine that it's almost better to just do it as we go. So we're not gonna pin the whole thing in advance. We'll start our sewing where this first pin is and we wanna be sure that we have a nice solid back stitch that doesn't extend behind where those tailor tacks are. Once we do our back stitch, we'll be sewing all the way around everything at quarter inch seam allowance. Also, just to give you a heads up, all of the seam allowances in this project will be quarter inch. So just take note of that as you continue throughout the other steps. All right, here we go. Begin at the first set of tailor tacks, being sure that your back stitch doesn't extend beyond the tack. Continue forward, matching the edges of the fabric and sewing with one quarter inch seam allowance. When you're about halfway to the next set of tailor tacks at the ear tip, stick a pin through both to match them together. Sew forward and end exactly in the tack with your needle down. Clip the seam allowance of the border piece only inward, almost to the tack. Rotate the bunny to the next section and pull the border around to align the two fabric edges. Reach for the next pair of notches and pin them together before sewing up to them. Doing this process of pinning each key point before actually arriving at it will help you properly distribute the fabric in each section, so this idea will repeat for the whole process. For the next point, you're going to stick your pin into the seam one quarter of an inch from the edge of the fabric and match that point to the tailor tack below. Sew up to this point, landing with your needle down. Pivot and realign your fabric to sew the next section. Repeat the previous steps as needed for the next few matchup points until you arrive at the notches that we designated as being for the zipper placement. Stop at the notch, then backstitch and come forward to the notch again. Raise your machine's stitch length to around five millimeters or your preferred basting stitch length. Sew across the bottom of the bunny, past the center notch, until you arrive at the other zipper placement notch. Return your machine's stitch length to what you were originally sewing with. Stitch a few stitches forward, then backstitch to the notch again and come forward, continuing the rest of the way around the bunny. You'll just be repeating all the previous steps until you arrive back where you started at the center of the bunny's ears. When you're about to finish, match your final tailor tack to the point you started from. Be sure you pull all the other seam allowances out of the way and backstitch to, but not beyond, the final tailor tack. After sewing, press the seam allowances open just along the section with the basting stitch where the zipper is going to go. 
Clip the seam allowances almost to the stitch line at any inward facing points, especially the one between the bunny's ears. And clip across the seam allowances at the tips of the ears to remove some bulk. Go ahead and remove all the tailor tacks from the seam too. Next, we're ready. He's squeaking. You can't be squeaking while I'm shooting, okay? I'm working. <laughs> no vomiting either. I'm making a whole new pillow because of you. Next, we're gonna be attaching our zipper to the area with the basting stitch where we press the seam allowances open. And we're just gonna be sewing a nice and easy standard railroad style zipper. So I have a 14 inch standard zipper all ready to go. And another thing that we're gonna to do to make this pretty easy is we're just gonna use our good old wonder tape to stick the zipper in place before we top stitch all the way around. So have your zipper facing right side up and take the wonder tape. We're just gonna lay two long strips going down both sides of the zipper tape and be sure you're putting this on the right side of the zipper, which is the side that has the pull facing up. Just lay it right on there, just kind of in the middle of the tape. Now I'll pull off the backing on both sides. We're gonna be laying this sticky side down against the seam allowances on that center section of the bottom of the bunny. Couple things to take into account as you place the zipper are, you wanna be sure that you have the zipper pull at the top and the zipper stop at the bottom positioned in between the two notches that indicate the zipper area. You also wanna be sure that they're in between your back stitching on either end of that basting stitch section. And another thing that makes this zipper kind of weird is the fact that we're putting it into a curved three-dimensional space. So I actually find that it's kind of helpful to use my tailor ham underneath while positioning. I'm just gonna pull it nice and snug onto the ham and find my starting point. Okay, here's my notch. And it doesn't matter which side of the notches you have the pull on versus the stopper. It can really go either direction. It's just a pillow. I wanna make sure that my seam allowances are still open. And as we stick the zipper in place, you wanna be centering the zipper teeth exactly on your seam and put the zipper pull a little bit down from the notch just to be safe. Have it centered, and then I'm just gonna look underneath and sort of roll the zipper tape downward while I center the teeth on the seam and press the wonder tape firmly in place to help it stick. I find also with this curve, depending on what type of fabric you're using, it does help to almost stretch the fabric a little bit as you stick the zipper in place, it'll help it kind of get seated a little more snugly into the curve and not give you too much excess fabric bubbles on the top after you sew it. So I kind of pull this little section taut and then roll it down and stick. We're gonna to be top stitching the zipper with the right side of the fabric facing up. And you wanna be sure that you have a zipper foot on your machine because you wanna feel that the zipper foot is just sliding along next to the zipper teeth as we sew. Begin by feeling for where the zipper pull is. You wanna position the zipper foot just below where the pull is to where the foot can sit comfortably next to the zipper teeth. Start sewing down the length of the zipper with your zipper foot right next to the zipper teeth. When you reach the bottom of the zipper, pivot to sew across the bottom of the zipper below the stopper, then pivot again to continue sewing up the other side of the zipper. Upon reaching the zipper pull at the top again, stop, grab a seam ripper, and cut the basting stitches from just below your back stitch to a couple inches past the zipper pull. 
Reach through the opening and unzip your zipper until the pull is behind the presser foot. Align the remaining portion of the zipper with the opening and continue sewing up, across the top, and then back down to where you began, moving the zipper pull out of the way as you pass it. Finish by seam ripping the remaining basting stitches to reveal the completed zipper. Next, we'll be attaching the portion of the pillowcase that we already have sewn onto the front of the bunny with its cute little face. So I have the front of my bunny laid out with the right side facing up. And here's what we've created thus far with right side down. You're just gonna plop it right on top. Our starting point will basically be the same thing as when we sewed the back on. It just looks a little trickier now. So just kind of unfold all this and you want to come to this corner with the tailor tack and match it up to the tailor tack between the ears on the bunny's face. And from this point, you're going to follow the exact same procedure that we did for attaching the back to the border. The only difference that we're gonna encounter is it's actually just gonna be a little bit simpler overall because we're not installing the zipper. So when you go across the bottom, you don't have to back stitch. You don't have to change your stitch length. You're just gonna go all the way around the bunny until you arrive at the center of the ears again. The main thing that I want you to take into account before completing this step is you wanna make sure that the zipper is unzipped because after we sew this, we'll need that to be open to turn the whole thing right side out and you can't unzip the zipper from the inside of it. So make sure your zipper is unzipped and then just repeat the previous steps to finish sewing the pillowcase together. Next, we still have a little hole here at the top of the bunny's head that we need to close up. I'm gonna bring everything back in. See this opening where we have these two U-shaped curves? I wanna be bringing them right sides together. So let me see if I turn it like this. And it's almost kind of helpful in positioning this to grab the two little pointy corners of the seam allowances and make sure they're pulled upward. So as I pull those up, see how now I can take these two edges of the fabric and bring them together where we'll pin them in place. And you wanna make sure that as you're pinning this little seam here, that all this other gook is out of the way. So kind of pull all the other fabric away so that you feel that you're only pinching these two layers as you're pinning. I like to kind of get one pin at either end really close to the beginning of the seam just to start drawing everything together. So there's one, now I'll come over to the other side. So there's my little points just aligning the edges of the fabric, pin here. And once you have those pins at either end, the rest of it is actually pretty simple to pin. So still just keep matching everything up and let's do one in the middle. And just because it's kind of a funky shape, we'll add a couple more. We're gonna be sewing this short little U-shaped seam at our same quarter inch seam allowance that we've been using for the whole project. And you just wanna be really careful about where you begin and end your seam with the back stitch yet again. Even though I've removed a bunch of the tailor tacks that were used for sewing, imagine that you want your seam to begin here where those tailor tacks originally were, where all those points were brought together. If it's a little hard to figure that out without the tailor tacks in place anymore, basically just look for the end of your stitch line coming up on either side. Those are the beginning and end points of this seam. Now it's time to sew the pillow form that's gonna go inside the finished pillowcase. I already have all my pattern pieces cut from muslin and ready to go, and you know what? This is gonna be the exact same process that we used to assemble the pillowcase, with the only exception being we're not installing a zipper. We are gonna do something a little bit special at the bottom where the zipper originally is in the pillowcase, uh, but I'll instruct you on that in a moment. 
First, assemble the border by attaching the body to the head and ear pieces, just as we did before. Then, go to the center notch on the body piece and mark the width of your hand on either side of the notch. Begin sewing the border to the first bunny piece, just as we did on the pillowcase. When you come to your first marking, we're going to be sewing this area the same as we did in the first step of installing the zipper. Backstitch at the notch, raise your stitch length to five millimeters, and sew across the space between the two marks. When you arrive at the second mark, return your stitch length to normal, backstitch, and continue sewing the rest of the way around the bunny. After sewing, press the seam allowances open just along the section with the basting stitch, and then use your seam ripper to cut the basting stitches open between your back stitches. This will be the opening that we'll use to turn the pillow right side out. Follow the remaining steps that we previously used to attach the other side of the bunny and close up the ears at the top. Don't forget to clip all the corners as well. All right, so now I have my almost completed pillowcase and pillow form. We have one final step that we need to do on both of these. You want to grab your elastic that's listed in the notion section for the pattern. Your elastic can be pretty much anywhere from half inch to one inch wide, doesn't matter a whole lot. And it could be regular elastic, it could be a fold over elastic like you see me have here. The main thing we want to take into account now is how long to cut the elastic. You want to cut two pieces of elastic that are 14 and a half inches long and two pieces that are nine and a half inches long. This elastic is going to be used as straps that will be inside the pillow form and pillowcase. And these straps are going to help draw the bunny shape inward at these points at the top and bottom of the head. If we didn't do this step, then when you stuff the pillow, it would just sort of expand outward at these points and not have a nice enough shape. The 14 and a half inch pieces that you cut will be for the pillowcase and the nine and a half inch pieces that you cut will be for the pillow form. The ones for the pillowcase have to be a little bit longer because they need to wrap around the body of the pillow on the inside of it. What we're gonna do next is take a piece of the elastic, and I'm doing this first one on the pillowcase, but the process is gonna be the same for all of these. I wanna come to these two points at the bottom of the head and look at the seam at that spot that runs along the border. Come to the middle of the seam, and at the middle, bring the seam allowances together, grab the end of your elastic, and match the end of the elastic with the edges of the seam allowance, right in the middle of the seam, and just pin it in place right there. Now, making sure that it doesn't twist as you do this, you're just gonna bring the other end of the elastic over to the other seam that's straight across from it and pin it the same way. So it should look about like this. Now I'll do the same thing with the next 14 and a half inch piece of elastic. Then we'll take our two nine and a half inch pieces and do the same process on the pillow form. Now to sew the ends of the elastic in place, you're just gonna come to all of them. They'll all be sewn the same way. Just stitch right across the end of the elastic in line with the stitches of the seam. Okay, it's stuffing time. Take your pillow form. We're gonna turn it right side out through the hole that we seam ripped open. So now those elastic straps will end up inside the pillow. I have here a 16 ounce bag of polyfill stuffing. We're just gonna start filling it up, see how much it takes. And this could be all done according to your preferences of softness or firmness. All right, so it looks like my 16 ounce bag made it through with even a little bit to spare. Now we just get to go ahead and sew the opening closed here, which has to be done by hand. So I have a hand needle all threaded and ready to go. My thread is just doubled back around with a knot at the bottom. We're just gonna come to the opening right here and do what we call a whip stitch 
to sew it closed. And this is where it was also helpful that we pressed these seam allowances while the seam was still basted closed because we can see exactly what edges need to match up as we stitch. I'm just gonna take my needle and start from kind of the inside at the beginning of my opening, pull it through, and now we'll just be trying to make the folded edges meet each other. My thread is coming out on the left side. I just wanna move quarter to a half inch forward on the right side of the opening, bring my needle through, as well as bring it straight across to the other side, and pull. Now I'll go back over to the right, about a quarter to a half inch forward again, bring it through from the right, push it straight over to the left, and pull through. And I'll just continue this stitch all the way until I reach the other side. And now as we get to the end, let's take one more stitch and I'll bring the needle through the fabric one more time while, if I can untangle my threads, bringing the needle through the loop once and do that two or three times total for added security. And now the pillow form is completed, so let's go grab our pillowcase. Okay, just gonna set pillow form aside. Here's the case, it's still inside out, so hopefully you remembered to keep your zipper unzipped when you sewed the final seam. We're just gonna go through the zipper opening, turn it right side out. There's that cute little face again. Just gonna push those ear tips out, nice and pointy. And I'm just gonna stick this in this and zip it closed. Um, the only thing I wanna point out is the elastic strap on the inside of the pillowcase. I like to have them positioned so that they're wrapping around the back side of the pillow as opposed to around the front. Just in case your elastic is thick, we don't wanna see any impressions coming through on that cute little face. So let's have the elastic around the back of the pillow form. Get in there. Here's our zipper. Remember we installed this zipper because you now have a removable, washable cover. So let's zip it closed and ta-da! Creepy Bunny is now complete and ready to take a permanent place on the couch or wherever you do your best lounging. Remember that this pattern is available for purchase in my House of Binding Pattern Boutique at the link below. And while you're at it, please consider subscribing to my channel so you'll be the first to catch all the latest tutorials. Keep making amazing things. I'll see you next time. Hey, I said don't make a peep.